Hello everyone, welcome to IAS Baba's 60 days rapid revision series for prelims 2022. This is day 42 and we take up environment and ecology. So mainly the current affairs topics, they are considered here. And before going to that, we have the guessworks. So here the first question with reference to the history of ancient India. Baba Bhuti, Hastimala and Chemeshwar, they were famous for which of the following? So here friends, just have a crude peruse over the ancient history. So here, have we read temple architectures in detail? So do we know that this architect built this temple? So that was not possible, but they were the famous names. We had read it somewhere else, but we don't know where we have read actually. And then philosophers. So here also we know about the Dvaita philosophy, Advaita philosophy, or even the Charvak, Lokayata philosophy, etc. And they were not being postulated by any of these. So here, the buck stops at these two, that is Jain monks or the playwrights. So either they are the literate years or the Jain monks. So here again, so apart from Mahavira and apart from Rishabhanatha and others, so have we studied all these Jain monks in detail? We haven't studied, but playwrights, yes. So we might have studied like uh, book names and the authors of them. So all these we might have come across in many UPSC materials or any videos or any others. So if you think in that perspective, we can take a crude guess on these playwrights. Okay, so this is how we can tackle. And if you had the knowledge, if you had read it, so but obvious here, knowledge is more easy than the guesswork. Then consider the following statements. The Montego Chum Fund reforms of 1919 recommended granting voting rights to all women above the age of 21. And the Government of India Act of 1935 gave women reserved seats in the legislature. So friends here, both the statements are purely factual and they are not conceptual. And here, UPSC will give such words in common, all, only, etc. And if it is completely factual statement, and most of the times, this word, it tends to go wrong. So mind my words, when I say whether it is a conceptual or a factual statement, in case of conceptual statements, there might be some alls and onlys, which can also go correct. And now the second statement, here there are no extreme words, so we can take it as correct. So if you go with crude guess, so it is like B would be the answer. And if you start over analyzing, if you get into the concepts and others, so most of the times you end up wasting the time here and you will not end up with any of the options. So that is why keep your analysis at the surface level. So overthinking that can cost a lot. And then with reference to 8th August 1942 in Indian history, which one of the following statement is or are correct? So it is that Govalia tank declaration that is quit India resolution. I don't think here the guesswork is needed. And this is an easy question. Even if you get it correct, I don't think there is an added advantage. So you have to compulsorily get it correct. And apart from this, so several other tough questions, you have to get them correct. Then come to next, which among the following is associated with the songs from the prison? That is a translation of ancient Indian religious lyrics in English. So this is very similar to the first question. So no hints are given. So only the factual content. So that if you have, it would be easiest. And else the guessing work is difficult. So friends, if you take the guesswork, as the benchmark, so the lengthy statements and the lengthy questions that will be the easiest ones to hit the guesswork. The shortest one will not be. And as far as the knowledge is concerned, it is vice versa. Short ones will be easiest. Okay. So here again, for the guesswork, it is difficult. And even if you had left this question, I had no issues with that. And then come to the next with reference to medieval India, which one of the following is the correct sequence in the ascending order in terms of size? So here the statements are not that lengthy. But considerably, we can take a guess. Say, for example, we have heard about the Santal Parganas. And Pargana is the name of a district in Bihar, Bengal, etc. So in that case, so the district comes in the last and then the state comes and then the center comes. So likewise, Subha, Sarkars and Parganas, that we can take a crude guess. Then come to next, who among the following was associated as secretary with Hindu female school? which later came to be known as Bethun Female School. Friends, this word Bethun is present only for Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar in the old NCRT Bipin Chandra. So again here, the question is very short and knowledge will help you hit more easily than the guesswork. So friends, categorize your approaches accordingly. So if it is lengthy, go with the guessworks. If it is shorter, so try if you can with the knowledge and don't waste your time again and again over there. So better leave most of the short questions if you don't know. There the chances of going wrong is more. Okay. So here at the very first itself, we got some six short questions. So even if they are difficult, even if you did attempt them up to your satisfaction, don't worry, move on. 
there are some lengthy questions in the end or in the middle and they can fetch you good marks then coming back to the topic the project rehab so here the project rehab reducing the elephant human attack using bees and it is an initiative of khadi and village industries commission so friends here the kvic is somewhat peculiar here so why would kvic come in a ministry of environment or with regarding to elephant human conflicts so here it is because that honey keeping or the bee keeping so that comes maximum under the khadi and village industries and then it intends to create the bee fences to thwart elephant attacks in human habitations using honey bees that is bee boxes have been placed on the ground as well as hung from the trees and as and when elephants come to attack these bees will be released and we also know that elephants they have a proven fear for bees so that we are taking advantage of and once we release the bees the elephants they will move away or they will stop from encroaching into the fences then the pilot project was launched at four locations around chellur village in kodagu district of karnataka and then these spots are located on the periphery of nagarhali national park and the tiger reserve so which is known for the conflict zone between the human and elephants and it is extremely cost effective as well and also it is elephant friendly we are not killing the elephant so a small topic and then kalu valley notified as bird sanctuary friends it is not kazu valley it is kalu valley so remember even pronunciations so they can give you much marks in prelims then the ecologically important kalu valley wetland in vilupuram district tamil nadu has recently notified as bird sanctuary and kalu valley wetlands is said to be the second largest brackish water lake in south india after pulikat lake so we had located pulikat lake and this kalu valley is the second largest brackish water and it is a wetland of international importance so friends what are the wetlands of international importance they are nothing but the ramsar sites and the place is home to a diverse species of flora and fauna so not so important a statement then it is a feeding ground for long distance migrants from the cold subarctic regions of central asia and siberia including the black tailed godwitch the eurasian curlew then white stock and ruff so friends this is an assignment for you go to the internet and watch the pictures of all these and they are actually beautiful to look at you can enjoy as well so this is a brief description on kalu valley and we have a map so friends kalu valley wetland that comes somewhere here and to the north of it to the pulikat lake will be there friends this wetland is in the middle of the ten pennai river so here we can see the ten pennai river and somewhere above the palar river so that flows so in between these two it lies and if you have any other important places we can look at here you can look at the borders of puducherry in these areas and also places like tindivaram and others so we can look at here then come to next the bilgiri ranganath swami tiger reserve so the enumeration or the estimation is underway at the brt tiger reserve in karnataka's chamrajnagar district and so here the estimation of tigers they are speaking of and about bilgiri ranganath swami tiger reserve so this derives its name from the bilgiri bilgiri means a white rocky mountain so giri means mountain in kannada and bili means white and here it is said that so lord vishnu resides and in local name lord vishnu is called the ranga swami so that is why bilgiri ranga swami tiger reserve and it is also believed that the hill range gets its name by the white mist so even mist also can give its name and it is situated in the middle of the bridge between the western ghats and the eastern ghats in south india so mark this as very much important and the forest of brt reserve are principally of dry deciduous type so one more point to be noted and are interspersed with moist deciduous semi evergreen and evergreen and shola patches so around them it has other forests but it is the dry deciduous type of forest so these are the description of brt and here if you look into the map so this bilgiri ranganath swami tiger reserve so that is very near to the kaveri river so we can see how kaveri river flows in a very nearby and along with that we can also look at places like mekedatu here and then other places like shivana samudra and others and here we can also look at the places like marathalli and kollegal etc friends you know that kollegal so this was a famous area in the life of mr veerappan and marathalli is a famous place in bengaluru so this area is somewhere nearer to the bengaluru mysore area so this is how and then the invasive alien species so here we have a list of invasive alien species the african apple snail 
So it is found in Andaman and Nicobar Islands and now it is spread across the whole country. And the papaya mealybug. So this massively affects the papaya crop in Assam, West Bengal and Tamil Nadu. And then we have the cotton mealybug. So these two are very similar and this threatens the cotton crops in Deccan. And then we have Amazon sailfin catfish. So it is responsible for destroying the fish population in wetlands. So mainly present in West Bengal region. And then we have orange cup coral. So that is originated in the Indo-East Pacific. Then the primrose willow. It is an aquatic plant native to Central and South America. So we can see the pictures of these. So this is the papaya mealybug. And the cotton mealybug is very similar to this. But in that we don't have this yellowish colorations. We only have the pure white. And this is the Amazon sailfin catfish. So here we can see the sailfin. That means in every fish we will be having the sailor like this. And this also has this fin. And that's why sailfin. And here we can see the prime rose willow. So this is a small rose. Or we can say it is a willow rose. And then here we have the corals. So all these are invasive alien species. And then come to next. The steps taken to control the invasive alien species. So here article 8H of the Convention of Biodiversity and the IG target 9 aim to control and eradicate the alien species. So remember the IG target and the CBD. Then the Global Invasive Species Program is supporting the CBD with IUCN as the partner. So mark this IUCN as important. And then IUCN's Invasive Species Specialist Group has also been working to promote an exchange of the invasive alien species information and knowledge across the globe. And then IUCN has also developed a number of global database which provide critical information on IAS such as the Global Invasive Species Database. So the steps taken. So apart from CBD and IG targets, so we have the Global Invasive Species Program and the IUCN's Invasive Species Specialist Group and then we have Global Invasive Species Database. So these are some of the facts and remember the role of IUCN here. Then come to next. The program on the sea grasses. So sea grasses, these are the flowering plants that grow submerged in shallow marine waters like the bays and lagoons. So but obvious, the name itself suggests. And then the sea grasses evolved from the terrestrial plants that recolonized the ocean around the 70 to 100 million years ago. So mark this as important. So they are evolved from the terrestrial plants. So mostly when we speak of evolution, we speak that first marine animals, they evolved. And then came into terrestrial. So here it is vice versa. And then some of the important sea grasses. So sea cow grass and then 3D grass and needly sea grass and flat tipped sea grass. So go to internet and watch the image of these. So again it is an assignment to you. And then the program to control sea grasses. So government has initiated a project across the states of Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and Odisha. And it aims for enhancing climate resilience of India's coastal communities. And this includes a grant of US dollar 43.49 million by the Global Climate Fund covering 24 ecosystems in these selected areas for restoring the India's natural ecosystem such as mangroves and removing the sea grasses. So here remember the Global Climate Fund and that is giving the fund for this the program on sea grasses and it is initiated in these three states. Then come to next the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and its latest report. So IPCC's latest report has been released and friends here only the important facts and the rememberable facts has been brought. So compared with the period of 1850 to 1900 that is the pre-industrial times, the increase in global surface temperature for the decade 2011 to 2020 is estimated to be 1.09 degrees Celsius which is an indication of how much the world has warmed. Friends we have been working to control the world temperature within 2 degrees Celsius but 1.09 degrees Celsius has already been reached. Then, even in the best case scenario, the global surface temperature increase averaged between 2089 and 2100 could be 1 degree Celsius to 1.8 degrees Celsius. So even if we consider it the best case, that means all of the nations if they come together and if they curb the carbon footprint to the maximum capacity, so this 1.8 degrees Celsius will be reached anyhow. But if we consider the worst situation, it is 5.7 degrees Celsius. And this is huge. And then, since the original pledges of Paris Agreement are insufficient to keep the warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius, so deep and early cuts to the greenhouse gas emissions are very much necessary. And then, the 2015 Paris Agreement. So here, world should act 
to limit warming compared to the levels that existed before the industrial revolutions well below 2 degrees Celsius. So that is the IPCC report says. So 2 degrees Celsius is not the actual target. We should strive for 1.5 degrees Celsius. So that means we have to make our targets more stringent in the INDCs. That is in the independent nationally determined contributions. So these are the facts given by the report. Then come to next Northern River Terrapin. Friends, recently the GPS transmitters have been installed for these Northern River Terrapins in Sundarbans. And after installing these, we found that so they have been traveling from Sundarbans to as long as Bangladesh. So they have been swimming for 100 kilometers. And more facts regarding the Northern River Terrapin. It is found in India and Bangladesh and Myanmar, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand and others. And it lives in coastal mangrove that is in the estuaries, creeks. And it also ventures out far upstream during the breeding season. So only during the breeding season, it goes into the river, else it lives in mostly in the coastal regions. And in the IUCN, it is critically endangered. And in the sites, it is Appendix 1. And here we have the picture of this terrapin. Friends, actually seeing this is not a turtle. So it is not living in the marine per se. So it lives in the marshy areas. So that's why it is more a tortoise than a turtle. And here we can see the difference. Turtles will be having the fin-like legs, but the tortoise, they will be having the nails and the fingers. So that is the difference. Then come to next, the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention. So India has emphasized on following the Biological and Toxin Weapon Convention at the UNSC meeting on Ukraine. So India has spoken this in the wake of the rumors that US is sponsoring these bioweapons against Russia. Then the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention was the first multilateral treaty to categorically ban a class of weapons. So to ban a class of weapons, so this is the first convention. So we can remember it as a semi-important fact. Then it is a treaty that came into force in 1975 and a total of 183 countries are party to the treaty that outlaws the bioweapons and even the US, Russia and Ukraine. So all the three, they are the party to this. So this is the fact to be remembered. And then Come to more facts. So obligations of the treaty. The treaty prohibits the development, stockpile and production of transfer of biological agents and toxins of the types and qualities. And then should a state possess any agent, toxin or delivery system for them, they have nine months from entry into force of the treaty to destroy their stockpiles. So even if I have preparing them, so within nine months I have to destroy. And if I am not preparing, I shall not prepare in future. Then the convention stipulates that states shall cooperate bilaterally and multilaterally. So that will be there in all conventions. Then states may also submit their complaints to the UNSCR, that is the United Nations Security Council resolution, should they believe another state is violating the treaty. So if someone is violating the treaty, then other members, they can complain to the UNSCR. So remember this and then come to next. Poisoning of Himalayan griffon vultures. So here at least 100 vultures of this Himalayan griffon species. So they have been died in Assam due to poisoning. And here more facts regarding Himalayan griffon. So these are the old world vultures and they are native to Himalayas and the adjoining Tibetan plateau. So what are these world world vultures? So world world vultures are the vultures that are found in the world world that is in Europe, Asia and Africa. So America and others they are being found newly and they become the new world. And they belong to the family Asipitridae, which also includes eagles, then buzzards, then kites and hawks. And it is listed as near threatened on the IUCN red list. So mark this as important. Then a study by the Bombay Natural History Society found that population of the Gibbs group in India and Nepal is been declining by 99.99% in just two decades. And Himalayan griffon and the white backed and the slender billed vultures are among these members. So of all these, they are experiencing the 99.9% of reduction. So mark this, this is not an extreme statistic, it is factually correct. Then come to next, the new genus of parasitic flowering plants. So here we all know that the Septamaranthus we had already discussed, it is a parasitic flowering plant. So along with this, so other flowering plants were also being discovered, so we will discuss them. First is the Nicobariodendron, so it is under the genus Hippocrataceae. And then the Pseudodiplospora, so it is under Rubaceae. And then Pubistilis, so again the Rubaceae. And then Sphaeranthera, so it is under Euphorbaceae. 
so have also been discovered earlier from the nicobar group of islands highlighting the ecological significance of the region and the recently new species in the hemiparasitic family that is loranthaceae dendrophthalalgi have also been discovered from the nicobar friends here what are the important ones so just have a glance of the names that is the nicobario dendron then pseudodiplospora then pubistilus and then sphiranthera and then loranthaceae dendrophthalalgi so lalgi lal you can remember likewise and also remember that most of these are present in the andaman nicobar island so a crude idea likewise is more than sufficient here then come to next the solar waste handling policy so according to the international renewable energy agency that is irena india does not have a firm policy on managing waste that results from the used solar panels or from the manufacturing processes and then india's solar manufacturing industry took off around 2010 and since then we didn't have any solar waste handling policy but however the reason was that so at that point of time so we produced least waste and our production was not that great so government of india didn't think of coming up with such a policy but now the solar targets have been increasing and hence there is a need to come up with a policy and according to irena it is estimated that the global photovoltaic waste will touch 78 million tons by 2050 with india expected to be one of the top 5 photovoltaic waste creators so mark this top 5 as important then however india currently considers solar waste a part of electronic waste and does not account for it separately and then a committee had been constituted under the chairmanship of secretary of the ministry of renewable energy to propose an action plan for the circular economy and a pilot facility of the solar panel recycling and material recovery has been set up in gumidi pundi in chennai so here just remember the place and remember some of the data of arena and also do some research on arena so this ngo it works in renewable energy sector so that is more than sufficient a crude one friends again whenever you read any paragraph on prelims so make sure that you will mark likewise and remember so 1 2 3 only these points you will remember for that page so that is more than sufficient don't waste your time in revision so also give importance to analysis of the mock test and also the guess works then the lifestyle that is lifestyle for environment so life is about making lifestyle choices to improve our planet and life will be a collision of like minded people across the world who will promote the sustainable lifestyles with the 3p approach that is the pro planet people then the pro planet people approach so this movement it reiterates the india's commitments to the climate change at the global forum and it also reinforces india's clean green and sustainable and reliable energy goals so again it is very much related to the environment so you will get a question like 3p is related to which of the following so make sure that you will have vision and make sure that this will be one of the easiest questions you will face if it comes then the lifestyle for environment so it is an idea given by indian pm at the unfcc cop26 and this became a strong foundation for the p3 and the life is a vision of a resilient and sustainable lifestyle that will help in dealing with the climate crisis so here our prime minister he spoke in glasgow summit and he spoke about this the lifestyle for environment and later that 3p was set up and that 3p will monitor the lifestyle for environment program so this much if you remember that is more than sufficient here then come to next the night pollinators so recently a new study has revealed that the moths especially the nocturnal pollinators are vital to the pollination in himalayan ecosystem of northeast india so in the northeastern himalayas moths so the night pollinators are the major players so mark that as important and then the key highlights of the study study establishes 91 species of moths as potential pollinators of 21 plant families so not so important a fact then the results assume significance as majority of pollination related studies are based on diurnal pollinators so that means we are being concentrating on the day pollinators but here the night pollinators is something new one so here telephosa then cuculia so they are found to carry the highest quantity of pollens so remember this telephosa and cuculia and they belong to Cambridae and Noctuidae family. So this Noctuidae, so it is nocturnal. The name is embedded here. And then more about the moths. So here we can see moths. So these are different from the butterflies. So here 
Moths are paraphyletic group of insects that includes all members of the order Lepidoptera that are not butterflies. So here friends, the butterflies they belong to this Lepidoptera order and within these there are some insects which are not butterflies and they are nothing but the moths. So they are paraphyletic that means these moths they don't have a common origin with that of a butterfly. So paraphyletic means that which doesn't have a common origin. Then generally moths are considered mysterious denizens of nights and for a long time they were better known as pest species. So they were known as pests. We didn't know that they will pollinate also. And as most of these are nocturnal, so they are called the denizens of night. Then compared with the butterflies, the moths have stouter bodies and duller coloring. So coloring is not so brighter here and the body also it consists of the hairy like thing. And moths also have a distinctive feathery and thick antenna. So even the antenna we can see here, it is feathery and it is thick compared to butterflies. So these are some facts regarding the moths. Then come to next, Indravati Tiger Reserve. Indravati Tiger Reserve. So this is for the first time a large area that is 400 kilometers of Indravati Tiger Reserve which is a moist affected area as covered in the tiger census work. So tiger census is going on in this also. And about the tiger reserve, it is located in Bijapur district of Chhattisgarh and the perennial river Indravati forms the boundary of the reserve on the northern and western side and it is one of the three project tiger sites in Chhattisgarh along with Udanti Sita Nadi. So this we already discussed and it is home to one of the last remaining populations of endangered wild water buffalo. So this also we had discussed and then the vegetation is mainly of the tropical moist and dry deciduous types. So here the tropical moist deciduous and dry deciduous both are present in the region and the tree species are the bamboo, sal and teak. So these are few facts regarding Indravati. Then coming to the map. So here we can see how the river Indravati. So that will flow around this Indravati Tiger Reserve. And along with that, we should also remember friends, the Amravati Forest Range is very nearer to it. And then we have Ambapani here. And also we have Gachiroli Forest Reserve. And then Sundar Nagar is here. And then Kangargati National Park is here. So all these, they are present very nearby the Indravati Tiger Reserve. Then, Fimri Stella Sunili and Neonatis Prabhuvi. So here, friends remember that Sunil and Prabhu. So mostly the South Indian names and researchers have reported two new plant species for the biodiversity rich Western Ghats. So as I said, they are from South India. So in the Vayanad district of Kerala. So here, Fimri Stella Sunili. So it is collected from the grasslands of Panmudi Hills of Tiruvananthapuram and the perennial plant of the Cypressia family. So it stands at 20 to 59 centimeters. All these are not so important. And then Fimbri Stella Sunili. So that is listed as the data deficient under the IUCN red list. So this can become a semi important. So for us, what is important here is that is the name of this and the area in which it is obtained. And then the Neonatis probuvi. So it is also a perennial flowering plant of Western Ghats. And it is discovered in Chambra Peak grassland of Vayanad. So again, it is in Kerala. And this is also a 70 meters plant. So again, remember the name and the area in which they are obtained. So only in this, the UPSC asks the question. So this is all about today. Then come to the last part. Friends, the simple physics says only when we overcome inertia, so the body goes into acceleration. So the same way, so we will achieve success only when we overcome our inertia. So our bad habits, so our past, so we should overcome all those things. So no matter how many failures you have done in the past, no matter how lazy you were in the past, so overcome all of them, have a new gear of life so that you will cruise into the success like anything. And that is the one and only secret of success. And as far as civil service is concerned, you must do it. So all the very best from my side. Good luck friends.